It's a Lumix G100. Oh, and I've not put the light on. Hello, it's Ed. Welcome to the studio. Thanks for joining me again. Just a quick one this week, and it's about gear. Now, I hate talking about gear. The internet is full of gear reviews and people trying to sell you gear and trying to tell you what you need to buy, and I'm not doing that. But I do get asked a lot of the time what I use to take the pictures that I show on my channel and on Instagram. Now, it's a mixture of cameras. I've always shot with Canons uh, just because when I started out, everybody I knew had Canons and I wanted to be able to borrow lenses and things, so I used Canons. I've always found them very good, but I'm not a big Canon uh, fanboy. This camera is my go-to camera these days, and uh, I look probably a bit different than I usually do because I'm filming on my phone, because this is usually what I film myself on for these Inside the Studio videos. It's also what I carry around with me pretty much every day in the hope of just catching a moment. And I've also used it for proper, proper events and things that I've been asked to photograph for other people. So I found it very, very useful, very robust and incredibly pocketable, which is the main thing that I really like about this camera. Now, it's not a professional camera, I don't think. I don't think you could call it a professional camera. It's a prosumer camera, maybe. Um, and so you might think that it might not be quite as robust and not have all the features that you might need. Um, but I've dropped this down two flights of stairs and it survived and I've done that with other cameras that haven't. Um, obviously, every accident is different, uh, so don't, I don't recommend doing it, but it did survive. Um, it's been out, as you'll probably have seen, in all weathers and it hasn't stopped working. Uh, I've had the occasional card error, please take the card out, but no more than I've had with any other piece of equipment. Uh, the one thing I would say about it is it eats batteries. The one thing I've known from the moment I got it, that battery lasts no time at all. So I have invested in a bag of third party batteries. So I usually have four batteries with me uh, when I go out uh, and I probably get through all four of them. So it's something worth knowing. And so far as I have been able to work out, you can't attach external power to it and feed it from an external battery pack as you can with some cameras, it just, it won't do it. Uh, it. It can be charged from an external cable, but you can't run it and charge it at the same time, to my knowledge, um, and I have tried. But if anybody knows different, let me know, because that would be brilliant. Um, again, it's getting on a bit now. This is the G100 uh, Panasonic Lumix. I had the GF1, which was the first in this sort of series a long time ago, and that lasted until I got this one, uh, which, improved on it immeasurably and it was still a really good camera that other one uh, this has the flip out screen which really does help in composition i'm still uh, holding it to your eye man it's got an electric viewfinder um, which is good in bright sunlight but also i grew up before there were these flip out screens um, and unless you had a tlr and you were shooting medium format you didn't tend to use a waist level finder so that's what i tend to do um, but yeah a real improvement on the original. It has a silent shutter, which is great if you're taking pictures somewhere where you don't want to make a noise. For instance, uh, if you are asked to record uh, a choir or uh, a solo performance or something, and you don't want it going tick, 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 and really annoying the people around you and possibly the person performing. So that is a great advantage of this. It has various custom modes on it, so I can set it to how I want it to perform for a certain situation and not have to worry about getting all the settings perfect when I set off, which is the great thing about just grabbing it out of the pocket. It has a good selection of lenses with it. This is the 40 millimeter pancake, sorry, it's a 20 millimeter pancake lens. It acts as a 40 millimeter lens if it was full frame. This is a, a four thirds camera, which means it's very light as well, very light and very small, which is the main thing I like about it. Um, but yeah, it has this 20 millimeter pancake lens, which is on it all the time and I go everywhere with it and it is actually very easy to snap on there. Uh, I've got two other lenses. This is the kit lens that actually came with it. Uh, it's uh, an optically stabilized 14 to 45. So that's a good wide angle to a slight telephoto. And I picked up this in a second hand shop a few years ago. It's an Olympus um, 
40 to 150. So that takes care of all the telephoto. Basically, it's the equivalent of a 300 mil on full frame when it's uh, at full extension. So it's got a lot of reach to it and the optical quality is pretty good. So as I said, this is a four thirds camera and that means it's uh, sensor size. It's uh, slightly uh, squarer than the usual 3.2 that I'm used to from full frame or APS-C. And I still shoot at three by two, but what it means is a little side effect of the sensor size is I get a bit of wiggle room top and bottom. So if my composition is off just by a fraction, I can move the frame up or down just a tiny bit uh, and get that little bit that I might have missed off the side. So it's a kind of really nice little, I don't know if it's a feature or just a side effect of the kind of camera it is, but I do find that very useful when I think, oh, if only I hadn't cropped the top of, oh, hang on, let's move that down a bit. Really helpful. So I'm probably saying like a real Panasonic fanboy, but I'm, I'm not. I just, I, I take what I get and I make the most of it, as you probably know from these videos. I believe the Ricohs are really good. The GR3 I'd like to have. I had a Ricoh GR back in the day, like one of the really old ones, um, but it had a tiny sensor, so you couldn't throw anything out of, uh, the depth of field was just too big for me. And it was a bit slow at the time because it was an early generation. I can't remember which one it was. If I remember, I'll put the info on the screen. But um, yeah, I've always liked pocketable cameras. I'm used to using professional Canon cameras, which are chunky. My 1DS2, which was the one I used for most of my uh, freelancing career, um, that was a beast. And I don't know if I could lift it these days. Um, I still use the 5D Mark II. You've seen me using it for uh, scanning photos. And I do take it out for stuff where I really want to use the big lenses that I've got with that Canon. But this is just with me everywhere. And that's what makes it such a great camera. I can put it in my pocket. And I do. It's just in my pocket there. Don't have any strap on it. Don't have anything to encumber me or get tangled up in things. I don't even have it on one of those clips. I have got one of those ones that you can attach to a rucksack or a belt and just they're quick release ones like a gunslinger would have. And I do like them. I think they're really good. If you're sort of sightseeing or climbing a mountain, you want to have the camera within reach, but not hanging off you. Um, but for day to day, I just get it out of the pocket like that. And it's flick of the thumb. It's on. It's ready to go. I'm just taking a photograph of that camera now. It's all done. Love it. Really, really great. And I don't know any other camera that I've used that is so portable. It's so light. I could use this all day and I don't get tired. I can juggle it around. I can shoot it left handed. It's, it's just perfect for me. And the results I get from it are good. I have them printed up to uh, 12 by 18 for my archive and I'm always happy with the results. Now, I did a talk about resolution and all that sort of stuff. You can see that video, so I won't go into it in too much detail. It's 20 megapixels, which I think is way more than I need. I do sometimes crop in. I've got no problem with cropping. And so it is nice to have more than my first digital camera, which I think was one megapixel, and my first professional one, which was five or 10. Um, so 20, more than enough. Obviously, if I could have 100 megapixels, that would be even better. But one of the good things about this camera is it didn't cost a fortune. I can't remember exactly how much it did cost, but it's not one of those two, three, four, five thousand pound cameras that if somebody grabbed it from you in the street, you might be tempted to try and hold on to. This, it's worth less than me, I think. So uh, I would let it go, um, which is a nice thing if I go into certain situations where I'm not sure about how dodgy it's gonna be. I don't have to worry about losing an expensive camera and it is that thing when you've got a £5,000 camera around your neck. It does kind of restrict what you want to do with it, or it certainly restricts me uh, in what I want to do with it. So it's nice to have this. If I drop it in the water on a boating trip, it's gone. I'd be sad, but I won't be crying too long about it, uh, whereas I would be if it was a Canon 1DX, 2, 3, whatever. Um, so yeah, a brilliant camera. As I said, it's not a professional camera, so maybe it has a few little drawbacks. It doesn't have dual cards, so you can't write to two different cards, but I've never really minded about that too much. Um, it seems to be fairly water resistant. I don't know what its official water resistance is. I don't think it's supposed to be waterproof, but you've seen this has been out in all weathers with me and it has come back fine. Um, one little thing that I had a problem with, the little on off switch there, um, for a very long time, I've had to wiggle it to get it to go on and off. And I think there's just like a slightly 
dodgy connection there, which is probably me forcing it too much, or it might be just a one-off uh, thing with this camera. It's certainly uh, not something I would criticize the, uh, the camera maker for, but it does seem very sort of small and, and flimsy, that little uh, switch, and I have had problems with it. But I have just learned to, I've got a, a knack for it, I've got a feel for it, I know when it's on, when it's off now, and it's not a problem. Um, I've talked about battery life, yeah, that is a pain. It came with this really nice little stand. This is meant for vlogging. It was, it was sold as a vlogging camera, but actually um, the lenses on it, because it's a four thirds camera, you'd have to have a super wide lens for it to actually be good to be held like this. So I don't tend to hold it to vlog with, but what I do do is I sometimes have it like that to film with, and it's just got a great little, it flips out and you can just pop it down like that, so it's really handy. Again, and I can even stick it in the pocket with that on. It's got a nice little ball socket joint there as well, so that you don't have to spend ages getting it to the right position. So yeah, I can just stick it in the pocket, he says. These, this is quite a tight coat. Um, it's slightly got smaller pockets than the last one I had. So yeah, it would fit in there, but I'm not going to uh, tear the pocket trying to do it in a panic right now. Um, so yeah, that's kind of a nice little add-on. I think it's worth it, even though it doesn't particularly do a good job of what it's supposed to be meant for, I think, but it's great as a little uh, tripod to carry around with you. Um, so yeah, that is my go-to camera. I think it's great. It's got all sorts of other little features that are brilliant. And yeah, I would kind of recommend it. I don't know if you can still get it. It's probably been superseded. Like I say, I'm not advertising. I'm not being sponsored or anything, sadly, uh, for this. So uh, yeah, if you could pick one up cheap secondhand, I would definitely recommend it. But then there are lots of other cameras that probably do as good a job that I just haven't tried yet. And as I said, I still use Canons for other things. I still use my um, Mamiya uh, film cameras and Yashikas. So I think whatever works for you. But for me, as a carry around camera, I love it. Right. I'll stop bending your ear about gear because, like I say, there's too many people doing that. That is it for this week. Thank you so much for joining me. Sorry it's been a bit of a filler this week, but I've been too busy to get out there and do a proper video. Uh, I will try and get that for you for next week, so please do like, share, subscribe so you don't miss more fantastic content. But until we meet again, take care of yourselves. Have a fantastic week. Bye for now.